Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple cardboard box using a sheet metal folding and on shape. Uh, here it is. Nice, simple box. So let us begin. So here's our cube puzzle here, and we're just going to build off of here and continue with our box. So I could just start this right here and add a new part and all that fun stuff, but let's just make a new part studio here and work off of a new thing so that we have a clean uh, list here to work off. This box was a 2.25 by 2.25 uh, square. Check mark, we'll extrude this guy up, symmetric, 2.25, enter, check mark. All right, so here is an outline of our initial like cube puzzle, right? Like the full shape of the box. But uh, to give ourselves a little bit of tolerance, let's do a move face here. And the whole thing, I uh, will go outwards. Let's just go 0 0.05. I'll just make it a little bigger to add some tolerance so that when we actually slide the uh, puzzle inside the box or whatever it is that we want in our box to uh, fit with a little bit of space. All right. Now from here, we can go right into what's called a sheet metal model. And that's this button right here. Uh, there's three different ways to make a sheet metal model in, on shape. Convert, extrude, thicken. Uh, we're just going to stick with convert. We're using a solid object here. So I'm just going to highlight my square and notice right here, it's going to automatically uh, select our part and you'll notice it's made six different parts. So each face of our cube here is now a different part of uh, the sheet metal. So it's separate sheet metal pieces. We actually don't want that. All right. So the first option here is face to exclude. That'd be if like we we're making like a shoe box and we wouldn't want the top. We want the top to be open. Uh, we would exclude this top face. Right, so it would look like that, right? But I don't want to actually do that. I want to worry about edges or cylinders to bend. This is where the fold will be for the sheet metal, right? Like on our box, it folds along the bottom. The bottom is one solid piece. This whole thing's one solid piece. So it's going to fold along that base. So if I rotate around to my bottom plane here, and I'm going to click on each edge of the bottom. And you'll notice what it does here. It actually takes our object uh, sheet metal profile and it actually makes these bends. Perfect. I actually also want the top here to fold. Uh, what that means, right? Looking at our box again, that's this hinge right here for it to fold while the bottom also folds. Dump them all over the place, right? So the bottom is a fold and the top edge here is a fold. And that's what we just created. All right. Uh, next up, I'm going to include bends. What that does is kind of push this over and what this means in our bends in general is the uh, radius of bend is going to be dependent on our material. So I'm using cardstock, right? Cardboard, whatever it may be. Uh, that would be your thickness here. I measured it out. It's 1 32nd. So I put in 1 32nd, 1 divided by 32. And bend radius, I don't really know the bend radius of cardstock. So I just typed in 0 0.025. It is what it is. Material, uh, this would be if we also knew this for the material we're using. I don't know it for sheet metal, so I'm just going to leave it, or not sheet metal, cardstock. I'm leaving it to the default, which is probably sheet metal. And then we'll leave here. Minimum gap is our gap, if we zoom in a little bit here, is how much space it's giving us in between. We don't need much space here right now uh, because we're going to account for it later when I do these little folds on the inside. I'll show you how to do that. Corners, I uh, definitely want to add some corners and I chose a round size and I'm making 0.2. Uh, that's these right here. You can change them to different ones like rectangled, scaled, uh, simple, or just straight up. I chose a round size 0.2 uh, just for, so it be a little easier and cleaner for the corners when we're folding it. You can see that, let it autofocus, there you go. It just makes it nice and clean on that corner overlap. We're folding this by hand, so it gives us a little uh, wiggle room if we have any uh, you know, mistakes in our folds when we're trying to line things up. Bend relief type, I'm just leaving that as a tear shaped. We're actually not gonna worry about, I'm not actually gonna utilize that too much here. But minimum gap, corners, and our thickness and bend radius is what you should be most concerned about uh, with setting up correctly. All right, check mark and look at what we have. We already are almost there. If you actually go over here to sheet metal table and flat view, it opens up this new window, which is very helpful. 
I'm going to pull this up this way because I'm more concerned about this guy here. And this is what it would look like flat. If I opened up my box here, uh, that is the shape of it right there. But we need a couple more things here. So for instance, on the inside of my box, you can see, I built this correctly, right? I made these abs inside and I glued it flush uh, so that you can actually seal this closed. And I also made this flange in the front, fold it over, close there. How'd I do that? Last things I need to go over, right? So first thing is to make the, those uh, flanges on the side. So what you have to actually do is give it a little space. So it doesn't like, or Onshape doesn't like, if I was to do that now, it would intersect with this side face. So what I need to do is again, go into our move face. And I'm going to move, make sure you click on this correctly here, right? So I'm, let me zoom out so you see which ones I'm clicking on. I'm gonna click on the side faces here to push them in a little bit to give ourselves room uh, for these tabs. So you'll notice right now over here on the side, it's showing them extruded. Oh, my face is just straight up in the way, right? These are showing them here and we'll fix the orientation in one moment, but I'm going to choose all four of these side faces. Make sure you're choosing the correct ones. You can tell that you're choosing the correct ones by looking at this side profile or flat profile here. And you'll notice that they're all extruding outwards. So I'm going to change the direction. So they're going in. So I'm making it a little smaller. I'm actually only going to make it smaller by uh, the size of our material thickness, right? So that was one thirty second. Enter. And you'll see it's pulled those in just a touch and it's going to allow us to uh, add these flanges here. So you'll notice now we have a bigger gap in between the side profiles and the back and front. And now I can go up to here to a flange. I'm going to click on flange and we now can go into the same four faces that we just chose before. One, two, it doesn't matter if you click on inner outer that selects it here as well. Three, four, right? And now you'll notice over here, it's added these big, big old wings here. All right, so I actually want to make these a little bit smaller. We don't need it that big. And I'm going to get rid of the automatic miter. And you'll notice now I actually have the 45 degrees uh, that I specified right here. All right, so these are the tabs that when we fold this up, I can add glue to on the box so that I can actually close this and keep this closed shut. We are moving right along here. We're almost done. The only thing left is to add uh, that flange overhang flange in the front, right? So we just made the inner uh, tabs on the inside that I can glue it shut. Now we have this front flap, but I just need to add this part here, reversing the camera, this part here, and this little tab in the front so we can actually make a little slot and close the box, right? So well, how did I do that? How did I do that? Uh, back to orienting this correctly, right? So this uh, front flap here, I actually want to go over, or the top flap, I actually want to go over this front flap. So once again, I got a move face. I'm going to choose on this edge here. And I'm actually going to, instead of just doing blind and have a distance, I'll do up to entity. And I'll just click on this front face. And it's thinking about it, but look at what it does. It brings that edge that we selected out to the front face. Perfect. See? Exactly what we want. Zooming out a touch. And now this actually, I could do again a flange like I had before, but actually going to draw this shape. I'm going to actually sketch it. I'm actually going to draw a sketch on my top uh, face here. Let me move over, give myself some space to draw. And I'm just going to click on corner, go out, click on opposite corner, right? And I will add in, let's say these are 45 degrees. 45 degrees and I will add a center point rectangle here at 0.25 enter 0.25 enter there it is I will trim this away I am going to get an error I know but if I delete one of these coincidence we're okay all right so I just drew this sketch uh, profile this uh, that I want for the flap going over it all right green check mark there it is and look how easy this is another button here called a tab i click on it what uh is the tab profile which is basically what's the sketch that i want to become a tab that one 
and it's thinking thinking it's actually gonna automatically figure out what we want i'm not going to worry about the subtraction offset i want it to actually be the size that i had it set as but now i hit that green check mark and look at that i have this going over perfectly so if we look at our profile over here perfect let me turn off my face i know very disappointing for everyone but there you go there is the sheet metal profile it has our bends in it, it has our corners it has our flange going over it. no it does not have a bend here which i do have in real life but uh we're gonna just bend it ourselves by hand anyway so it doesn't matter uh, but last thing is to right click and export to dxf and that's going to now allow you to laser cut out your cardboard box all right simple easy you want to design on it too, wherever you uh, export it to, you can add designs for an engrave. Uh, these bend radius, those bend lines, they show up as an, a separate layer. Uh, you can just delete them if you don't want to engrave them, or you can keep them so you know, uh, use them as a guide to uh, bend them. All right, good luck, have fun.